you've given the time to the interview. Um, you reached 50 points with two games to spare. Do you look back at the season of mission accomplished or were you disappointed with the league position? Um, when it came to the time, because of the bad run that we'd had, you kind of do it with relief. Looking back now, I think we counted at 18 points we dropped to teams lower than us, um, which is very, very disappointing. And so you look back at that and say, even if you get another 10 points, um, I think with those 18 points, we would have finished seventh. Um, I always maintained that this was a group that was good enough to um, achieve top 10 status. Always said that. Um, I'd never said that they would. I said that, that it was possible and they were capable of it. Um, and I think dropping 18 points to I think, the bottom six teams would suggest that the team were capable, but lacked consistency. Um, and so, yeah, a little bit disappointed with the league position. I think the team was better than that. But having said that, for a club of our size and some of the things that went on during the season, um, not all of well, very few of which are common knowledge, then I think um, I think it was a um, uh, an exceptionally good season. Okay, we went full time during the close season with a significant number of departures. In hindsight, was it the right decision? And what benefits did you see transferred onto the pitch? Um, I suppose it's not really for me to, to decide whether it was the right decision, but on less money. Um, we finished higher by going full time. So because the budget last year, uh, last season was less than the budget the year before. So you make your decision. Um, we went full time and finished higher um, with a group that is now capable of, if it's kept together um, with some additions, I think that that group is more than capable of a top ten position. Um, and whether they can keep them together is debatable. But the previous year we finished as high as we could possibly finish. This year we finished higher than that. And I'm still saying that I think they could have finished higher. So I think it, um, the facts, rather than my opinion, speak for themselves. OK. Going on the budget, and there have been some rumours of the next season's budget, with it being cut from what is already accepted to be one of the smallest playing budgets in the league. Without going into confidential information between the board and yourself, do you believe we can be competitive next season? And a related question, when we kick off the new season in August, can we expect new faces in the team? <laughs> I think you can definitely expect new faces in the team. Um, definitely. Um, the first part of the question, sorry, you repeat that? Uh, over the rumours of next season's budget being the smallest, um, do you believe we could be competitive next season with a smaller budget? Um, it would depend on what other clubs' budgets are. Um, I think there will be very few. Obviously, we've lost Crawley, but we'll lose either Luton or Wimbledon. Um, I think if Luton go up, then that's the two clubs that were not conference clubs. They were, they were not conference clubs. Crawley's situation changed and they became, to my mind, a League One club overnight with the amount of, it was just a ridiculous amount of money for, for our level. Um, and Luton were never a conference club because they got relegated not because of how bad they were, but because of the points deduction. So with those out, the teams coming down and the teams coming up are proper conference clubs. They're there because of um, the circumstances, whether they're, what the crowds are or whatever. So you've got a much, a much tighter division. It depends on what everybody else's budget is. Um, based on last season's figures, I know for a fact that the budget that we've been that I've been given for next season will be the lowest in the league. But that's based on last season's figures. So I don't know what they're going to be, what the clubs are going to have this year. Um, I haven't yet come across a club, and I spoke to probably eight, ten managers in the league. I haven't yet come across anybody who's going to increase the budget. So I think everybody's cutting it. But yeah, we've started very low, and, and we're going lower. So. Can we be competitive? I don't know yet. Okay. Significant final one of good results came aside with the loan of two signings from Crawley. Did you always feel we were simply a couple of players short of being more competitive? No. Um, to be quite honest, the two lads from Crawley were not players that I went looking for. Um, I sat in Steve Evans' office. Um, he's a guy that I've got on very well with, uh, and Paul Rayner. Um, and the day the beat is 5-2, he said, what, we were talking just in general, he said, what do you need? And I said, I need an improvement in quality. I said, um, my squad is not strong enough. Um, and he said, so what positions do you need? I said, I'll take anything. And he threw the two names at me and I knew them. So I bit his hand off basically because um, he, he helped us out. Um, so we weren't probably paying their full wages. Um, we weren't paying nothing for them, but we weren't paying their full wages. So I took the two players um, and we slotted them in. Um, and I think our problem was that we didn't have enough quality. Our squad wasn't deep enough. I think if we'd get our first 11 fully fit and ready all season, we would have been fine. But that never happens. It's, it's about your 16, your 18 players. And bringing those two in, they added quality. 
um, and things started to click into place. But I always felt they would do at some point because they did. They have done every year. Um, if you get all the component parts right, then at some point you just get the bounce of the ball, and that's what happened. Um, I can't remember who it was we played. Somebody hit the post at one all. Um, hit the inside of the post, bounced across the face of the goal. It was in the first half at, at Church Road. I can't remember who it was. And I remember saying to um, at the yourself or Julian that earlier on in the season that would have gone in and we'd have lost this game and we ended up winning the game. And that kind of thing makes such a difference. Now over the season, it, um, you, you end up where you deserve to end up. And I think the league position was just about right um, based on, on all factors. Um, and so... I wasn't surprised by it, but it came at the right time. Okay. Having secured conference premier season status for next season, there was a lot of disappointment not to see a full a near full strength team in the Middlesex Senior Cup final. What was the thought process behind the team selection for that game? Um some of the players that weren't playing couldn't walk. Um Jimmy Hand would never have wouldn't have got on the pitch basically. Um so there was an element of we had a lot of knocks and bruises and the last thing we needed was a game um, and the other side of it was that team that played was the team that had got us there they played in all the previous rounds Brandon Pritch had never kicked a ball in the Middlesex Senior Cup so to then go and say right we want to win this trophy because because we're here I think is disrespectful to the competition disrespectful to the players that played so we played pretty much the side that played in all previous rounds um, and I personally believe this, the, the team was good enough, they didn't put performance in. It was a poor performance and the goals were terrible goals to concede. Um, and the last goal, as I believe, uh, as I recall, um, the guy went past our first choice left back, went past our first choice centre half, went past our other first choice centre half and scored. Um, and regardless of what team I'd have put out, those three would have been playing if, that, if I put out the strongest possible side. And we still conceded that third goal. So, um, and plus as well, Players like Charlie Wasmer, um, Nathan Webb, um, Esmond James played in those games over the past two or three seasons and they went on and it was an important part of their development. So, Joe Jacobs, George Isaacs, uh, Jack Patterson playing in those games, it's an important part of the development. Okay. We were told the purpose of the merger and the sale of Church Road was to enable the club to be competitive and secure a future of high level football. Is this still realistic? Um, I think if at the time, that statement was um, totally realistic, um, but I think there was an awful lot of very intelligent, very clever people who didn't predict the credit crunch and didn't predict that the uh, economy, of the world economy, was going to change so drastically. And once it's changed, then everything else changes. The money you get for church roads, what you then do with it, what you can spend it on, etc. Everything changes. What will happen? Um, I firmly believe will happen is that. A club that was getting, I think, two, an average gate of 250 in Hayes and a club that was getting an average gate of about 175 in Yedding will, neither club will no longer exist. One decent club will exist in a very good stadium. Um, as to where that level is, that depends on an awful lot of factors that are out of our control. And I think you cannot sustain um, high level conference football on the crowds that those two clubs were getting. Um, I think the first year Yelling finished 16th and Hayes finished third from bottom. That wasn't sustainable um, on the crowds they were getting. Is it sustainable now? I don't know what the average this, this year was, but it was around 550 last year. Um, so we, I think with an awful lot of work, there's a potential to go on and be a good conference club. Okay. Does the ground shame of working cause any difficulties or concerns for you? Well, the fact that it's the closest ground to my house, no. <laughs> Um, it's a good pitch. Um, these are the things that happen. You know, you go down through every club that's moved, every club that there's always been problems. I was at Huddersfield Town as a youngster, and we spent five years trying to get a, club, get a, a new ground sorted. I firmly believe that people will look back in ten years and go, "I can't believe that I can't remember what it was like going to Church Road, or I can't remember what it was like going to walking." These things happen, and you just have to deal with them. And if you don't, then what are you going to do? Walk away from it?